And may I introduce the king who made everything happen, Hunter Allen. Uh, can everybody hear me? Do you want me to use the mic? Louder. Louder? Oh, yeah. Lloyd, I gotta be louder. <laughs> Okay, good morning. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, going to try and catch up a little bit on some of the time that Dan used up, so we'll move right along. Um, uh, in April 2015, uh, we launched the revenue project within CoCart. Um, we launched that project with the concept that merchants are more valuable when we provide support and control the POS systems used for payment processing. And so I've got some good news for you. Today, October 2017, it's still the same. Okay, I think that we've certainly heard in this room the number of people that have mentioned that point of sale is a part of their business, uh, how uh, valuable having a payments or an integrated payment solution is. Uh, so I wanted to share, um, uh, we met as a board, so for those of you that are newer to Copart, uh, there's a board of managers, there's nine of us, uh, Dan, myself, uh, Nelda, Dan Cohen, Andy Anderson, Mark Jacobs, Ray Rea, um, uh, what's that? Rich Wachler and Nelda. Get them all? Milburn. Oh my goodness, I almost got in trouble. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that I find great about CoCart is that that board of managers, those nine people that get very involved in the operation of the company, have a very broad range of knowledge and experiences. And that has helped us, uh, I believe, uh, you know, move the company in the right direction. And very particular in my role in working with point of sale, it's uh, helpful in us what I'm going to share with you today, sort of the next strategic step in what we're doing. Uh, and so I, as we think about how to take a strategic step, we sort of look outward as what we see in the industry. Um, we continue to see the industry focus on integrated payments accelerating, evidenced in this room by the number of people that are talking about that. Uh, we see increased influence from technology solutions on payment processing relationships. Uh, fundamentally, the people that are providing the technology to process the payments can now have huge influence on the merchant and who they choose to process that payment with. Many acquirers are investing heavily in their product strategies, acquisition, R&D, etc. Anybody here last week about the Harbor Touch acquisition of PosiTouch? Okay, a, a, a very mature point of sale product with a large uh, reseller channel and a large base acquired by a payment processor. Uh, we saw what Heartland did several years ago. Um, we see uh, there's, a, um, uh, there's a, a tablet solution called Toast out of the Northeast uh, that they have just incredible amounts of money that are invested from venture capital. Uh, so it's hot right now in the payment space, in the, in the point of sale and integrated payment space. Um, that significant venture capital investments allow some players to defy normal business operating principles. It is real tough to compete with companies that don't care whether they make a profit or not. Okay, That's a challenge that, that exists in the looking out. Um, the other thing that I don't know is a big blip on the radar today, but I believe is coming, is security. Um, in some of the uh, standards-based organizations, we see continued focus on the markets that we serve. Uh, you certainly hear about breaches and data compromises uh, within the merchants that we serve. Uh, I think that we'll see a greater play on security solutions uh, going forward. Uh, the other thing that the board did was we uh, looked sort of inward at CoCart, and we sometimes do a little reality check every once in a while. Who are we? What are we? What are we doing? Um, we are a diverse group of sales offices that service diverse vertical, vertical markets. So you've heard here that there were some different things and, and different business models. There's great diversity amongst us here. Um, a single POS solution does not address the broad market opportunity that Copart offices can provide. So one of the things that we learned as we brought the revenue product into the Copart world was that it was a great product for people whose target markets are ideal for the revenue product. If you sell to somebody that revenue is not a good fit for, revenue is not a good product for you. And so that was one of the challenges that we faced in trying to serve CoCard, this diverse group as a whole, is trying to deliver products that helped everyone. Um, a fundamental operating principle of CoCard is to keep operating overhead as low as possible. Okay, we run lean and mean and enable the individual sales offices to maximize their own sales policies, principles, models,
to be as profitable as they can. And so we do all the time have, have uh, conscious awareness of where we're spending co-cards money and what overhead that we have. Um, and so the, looking out and looking in brought the board to the point where we wanted to share a strategic shift with you today. Um, our first goal is we want to leverage the investments and scale provided by the investments others are making in their product strategy. So let me, let, let me step back for a second. So one thing that you may have noticed in terms of walking around some of our great sponsors and vendors here is that there are other point of sale solutions out there. Okay? And a couple of years ago as we were working with revenue, we weren't really showing those other products out there. We were focusing more on revenue. What we, the strategic shift that we're making as a company is we want to embrace a wider selection of point of sale solutions for our members. And, and that's the basis of starting to see other products out there. And some of those products, we're gonna have, we have uh, Clover here with First Data. We will never be able to make the investments in product R&D, in, in development, in uh, in support services and some of the things that, that First Data pours into their product. And so if that product is a good solution for the merchant set that you serve, that may be a product that you want to take a look at. We can leverage their efforts to help ourselves succeed. And so that's leveraging those investments. We're going to broaden the product portfolio to increase our addressable market. We want to be able to serve more merchants. And we're going to adjust our corporate staff to more of a facilitator role. You know, today we have some corporate staff and their role is really uh, product management, project management, supporting offices. And as we make this change to encompassing broad offices, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to move the support services down to that vendor or those product levels. Okay? Um, increase focus on ads. So the way that we're going to handle this for uh, revenue is we're going to outsource revenue tasks currently performed by the co-card staff. So one of the vendor partners that's here today is CDE. They are a company that this is what they do. They take product and then they help ISO organizations be successful with product. And they have the investments and the resources to be able to do that. And we're going to leverage those so that we can take their experience and what they have and use it within our co-card world. Um, and they're going to, in addition to providing some of the things that are done by our co-card staff, on the revenue side, they're going to also start to take some of the service responsibilities of the supporting the revenue process. Some of the challenges that we've had in the revenue world have been related to our OEM partner and getting support directly from them. And then there will be some questions at the end, all, okay? Um, that, and getting some support from them. And so we're going to utilize, again, CD is doing this for other products, and you'll hear more. They're up, uh, they're up next afternoon. Um, uh, and so I, I want to um, highlight uh, one thing here. I'm going to bring uh, Freddie up in a moment. I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about Freddie for a second. So uh, as many of you know Freddie. Many of you worked with Freddie. Uh, and, and, and I've had the esteemed privilege of working now, I guess it's been about two and a half years, two years, uh, with Freddie in his position. And, and I can't say enough good things about Freddie. And I think that this will uh, sum it all up. Here's a guy who, about a month ago, we went to and we said, hey, we're going to make a strategic change in our business, and your position is no longer going to exist. Okay? And Freddie accepted that, and he has been a key part of helping us throughout this transition. And I want to give Freddie a hand. Because although times are changing, and this is a little bit about what business is about, you know, Freddie is, is, we would not be where we are today without you, and where we go from here will be based upon what you have done for us, and for that, I personally thank you. And so with that, I, we're, we're going to announce a little, uh, a little product announcement here for revenue. So, uh, Freddie, why don't you come on up and... Did this one work? <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello everyone. Well, let's see what Hunter's got on the slide here and we'll roll through here. The latest and greatest revenue product is the, the new AIO2. It's a tablet-based system. As you can see here, it's all in one. It tilts. Uh, they fix where you can be able to sign on the screen. Uh, it has a built-in um, uh, barcode scanner. 
Uh, the wonderful thing about this, it is all Wi-Fi. Um, can I go to the next screen? Sure. Because um, here's what we're talking about. It has a built-in printer. It has all the USB ports. It has a, uh, on the back, you can uh, put a PX805. Uh, uh, you can do um, Windows also, as well as Android on this tablet. Um, it comes in white, it comes in black. <laughs> Um, but bringing your own tablet is one of the issues that will speed up this process. This will be a good product for the delis, the small locations, and it will fly compared to the previous AIO that we had. This is what it should have been and what it in the future is for the AIO too. Uh, so I hope, yeah, this is a list of the, uh, the tablets that it supports or uh, the ones that they suggest. Uh, we do not have one up there for Windows tablets, but all of those tablets, I've got one in the back, I've got my laptop set up, so when we make a sale on Wi-Fi with, on, on the tablet, you refresh my laptop and you will see the sale directly in your back office cloud. Um, <coughs> that, that's kind of it. The speed is, is night and day compared to where we're at, so I would say give it a good look. I think it's a, a good product for the right opportunity in the right spot and, and so we do have this on the table in the back so anybody that is working with the revenue product this is uh, targeted today right now to the Android version uh, and it gives us a great hardware lineup on the Android revenue product from a all-in-one tablet based solution to we also have the full-size more traditional uh, POS terminal form factor that still runs Android and runs that product as well. So uh, you can take a look at that. It's on the back table there. Um, thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Uh, so um, the one uh, uh, note um, about our transition that we're, that's going on uh, to CD, who will bring up your next. Um, this is in process currently. Uh, it's going to uh, start to occur probably in the December time frame. So as of today, everything continues as is, same way that uh, the staff is there, Freddie is there, we're here to support you the way that we have up until this point in time. There'll be more information coming in the future as we begin to bring CDE and bring their resources online. And so uh, I think we'll take real quick if there's a question or two. Any questions for Hunter, Dalton, Ferris Bueller, where do you go? Yes, I don't get it. What is the role of CDE in regards to that? We're going to talk about CDEs up next. So, yeah, I, I, CDE is going to talk a little bit broadly about them, but CDE will handle the order processing for all of our revenue products, and they will handle uh, the, the billing to the offices, and so everything that goes through for ordering pro revenue products through our office will now go through CDE, sales support, helping you understand which product is the best for customers. And then the first thing to come online with CDE will be their support services around the Android product. And then at a later date, we'll bring support services around the Windows product online. So literally a plug and play. If you've ever sold Clover, and I compliment them, and that's why we have them here, because it could be a good fit, but you make the sale, everything else, open box, plug and play, they do the training, the menu build, the service support, and you, all you do is sell. That's our goal. Uh, Mike. So will that drastically affect the pricing? I know we discussed pricing. Not really. We'll, we'll, we'll have updated pricing. You're going to be yeah, excited about that. We, we don't expect Mike. there to be significant changes. There'll be some. But remember the goal why we all wanted revenue. Why we, why we invested in this brand. It's so we can make more money. So we can all have better margins. That's still going to be there. That, that's, we've got to have a quality product. We've got to have ease of use when we have to have great customer service support and, and cus so the customers are happy. More importantly, we gotta have the margins. The margins will be there, that's one of the most exciting parts. So, I don't wanna give too much away, maybe I did, but... Uh, <laughs> wouldn't be bad if you did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is there one other? Yeah. How many offices are selling revenue and how many merchants are using? We have a few, two, over 200, and I think we have 36 offices that have sold it. About 250 merchants. 250 merchants. 30 some odd offices. And we're gonna right now we're gonna keep the windows right now, right? So we everything got, is the everything same. Everything right is the now. same. Everything is the same. You can stop it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but one other thing you notice we, we our goal 
is they have, why we have Linga here. Where's, where's the mic? <laughs> Linga has a great iPad solution that we're looking at, and that could be white label revenue if we, if we get some traction there. So we invited them here today. We obviously have Clover, we have iMobile 3. Revenue isn't about one entity. Again, we want to have the optionality, but also the simplicity that we can make it turnkey. That's our ultimate goal, we're on track. I'm sorry.